Sorry, I thought I had it queued up. I'm sorry here. Mike, you might have added something about that day that you might not have mentioned earlier. Yeah, for a minute here, yeah. <clears throat> I don't want this to turn into a discussion yet. I will do uh, questions here towards the end. It's not. Basically, all I was going to say is that on 7-7-2016 was a very, very uh, anti-cop protest day. That, that whole uh, protest was a Black Lives Matter rally that kind of came out of the woodwork uh, during the week where there was two high-profile uh, situations in the nation where, where police uh, killed two African-American men. And there was protests all over the nation. Uh, that same night that this this protest happened in Texas, I believe it was, it was when the nine cops were shot uh, by uh, an ex-military guy who was retaliating against police brutality. So I believe that the very limited police presence on this day was in direct correlation with the with the nature of this event and why it was being held in the first place. It was very anti-cop. Police were uh, concerned for their safety. <laughs> So this is the Mike Blue Hair video. I'm sure several of you are familiar with Mike Blue Hair. He's a very well-known uh, street videographer. He likes to film the police um, and whatnot. So he was there, and he um, he got some of this. But what's interesting here is let me get to this part here. So this was after I had drawn the gun, and I'm back in way. Dude, you'll notice this guy here. This is uh, a Black Panther guy. Um, I personally know that. His name is uh, Jelani uh, Sharif. Um, he comes up to further harass and accost me. Just 30 minutes prior to this, he was the one in Pioneer Square who was calling for people to shoot police officers. Straight up. Saying, if you pl see police doing whatever, you got to pop them. Pull out your gun and pop them, is what he's saying. And then later on in his speech, He's saying that if you see the police uh, interacting with someone, doing whatever, if you don't get in there and interfere with them, you're going to have trouble with him. you have trouble with me if you don't go and assault police officers. Hmm. So this guy now comes up to get in my face, give me trouble. <laughs> Look, we got people holding people away from you. Let him leave, dude. Look. Let him leave. So now this guy in the gray hoodie, his name is George Lacus. <laughs> he comes up. Dude, he just wants to leave. Let him leave. I'm not turning my camera off. I'm good. Don't do that. Don't do that. Why you do? So this guy comes up in the middle of all that, shoves me from behind. Then I, you know, I immediately, again, using my non-lethal option, because I don't feel that that right there is a life-threatening circumstance. It is a threatening circumstance of some sort, but not life-threatening. So non-lethal intermediary object right there, used to deter him from further doing that, or to protect myself if he continues to do that. What's interesting is the undercover officer who watched all of this happen and refused to intervene, Brandon Combs, he's with the uh, undercover uh, drug vice team. Um, he writes in his report, Strickland started making a jabbing motion with his monopod at an unknown subject. What he leaves out is the fact that this subject, who's been arrested several times, is not unknown to the police, had come up to the people behind me and shoved me. He leaves that out of his report. So everything that I did throughout this entire thing was a reaction to what other people were doing to me. You know, again, I wasn't there to start trouble. I wasn't there to cause fights. I was there to film. Had they not made the conscious and deliberate decision to pick a fight with someone, some of whom knew I had a gun, then none of this would have happened. I'm thankful that everybody stopped and or got back when I drew and issued those further verbal commands to do that. I mean, I can't imagine if a couple folks would have started running up on me at that point. You know, I could not go to the uh, low ready position, which is this. Um, sometimes you'll see uh, police officers or people doing this. When you have multiple people at, coming at you from multiple different angles and you do this, all it takes is one guy coming up from behind you, wrapping his arms around you. Now your arm is neutralized and you can't level your gun. So I could not go to the low ready at that point. So I followed my training throughout this. 
And I did what I believe a police officer would do in that. Um, it's a simple concept. If you don't want someone to pull a gun on you, don't start fights with people in the street. What the heck do you think is going to happen? So Carranza was all too willing to talk to the police. The police finally show up. They jump off their paddy wagon with their guns out. I follow their commands. They yell at me to get on the ground. I follow their commands because I don't want any trouble with them. You know, that's just plain stupid. So they didn't care what I had to say. I'm trying to explain, yeah, these guys surrounded me. They were attacking me. I was trying to get away. I acted in self-defense. They didn't care anything about what I had to say. I said, it's all on video. You can look at the video on my camera. They didn't care. They didn't want to look at the camera. So one of the officers there, um, as this, the line was, they formed a line with a number of uh, riot cops as they were uh, taking me into custody. Um, he, and there were, there were a number of people who were still kind of in trail, including Grenza, who's still in tow on all of this. This officer says, instead of saying, who saw what happened? Are there any witnesses? Can anybody tell me anything? No, he's not saying that. He says, who was menaced by him? <laughs> were you targeted by him? He points directly at Blue Hair. He says, were you targeted by him? It's not who saw what happened. It's not trying to gather evidence. It's who was targeted. So I was in custody for four hours before they knew what to charge me with. I'm getting transferred around be between uh, cruisers, paddy wagons. Um, I finally into a holding cell for an hour and a half before they even knew what to charge me with. So initially they charged me with one count of menacing and one count of disorderly conduct. I finally got released from jail on recognizance at, I believe, 4.24 a.m. with orders to show back up at 2 p.m. for the arraignment. I need a little bit of water here. So I show up at the arraignment. By that point, people had already started raising legal funds for me. <laughs> 